you know, there are three fundamental best practices that I want to drive home here that are applicable to everyone building AI workloads in Azure. One, you want to isolate your internal AI workloads from your internet facing AI workloads. Two, you want to have a multi-region mindset when it comes to your AI endpoints and your data. And then three, highly consider using virtual networks as an additional layer of defense for your AI endpoints. Welcome back to the Azure Essential Show. I'm your host, Thomas Maurer, and today we are going to explore Microsoft's cloud adoption framework with a special focus on the guidance for integrating AI on the cloud. If you're not familiar with the cloud adoption framework, it's a comprehensive playbook for organizations looking to succeed in Azure. It provides guidance on technology adoption, organizing and skilling people, and establishing processes for managing workloads efficiently over time. One key aspect of the framework is its extensive guidance for organization looking to adopt AI. To unpack this AI-focused guidance, today I'm joined by my colleague, Stephen Sumner, Stephen, welcome to the show. Thomas, thank you for having me. So let's dive right in. How does the cloud adoption framework help organizations adopt AI successfully? Yeah, Thomas, you know, every organization, every business is trying to figure out the best way to incorporate AI into what they do. You know, they want to make sure AI adoption delivers real value. And to get there, there are some new decisions they need to make some new things they need to think about. And so to help streamline that process, what we have done is to create an end-to-end -end roadmap or framework, if you will, for adopting AI. And we designed this guidance to help businesses navigate the AI landscape. And we put that roadmap in the cloud adoption framework. And so this guidance is gonna show you where to start. It's also gonna show you what the next steps are to take, not only to adopt AI, but to govern secure and manage AI over time. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And that is like the guidance a lot of the companies uh, actually need there. But we, we know that AI is a broad category and different organizations have often different needs on how to integrate AI or use AI uh, in their ways. So how does the guidance really cover that? Yeah, great question. I mean, AI is, is broad, right? Um, but this roadmap or this guidance I think really does a great job of accounting for that breadth. So it covers generative AI, of course, but also covers non-generative AI adoption, like traditional machine learning. There's something in there for enterprises. There's something in there for startups. Enterprises are gonna get everything they need to adopt AI at their scale. And then startups are gonna get a quicker path to production, but still get those essentials they need to be successful. There's also something in here for a range of different roles across the company. So executives, there's something for you. Tech leads, there's something for you, definitely. Platform teams, workload teams, governance and security. They're all going to find something of value in this guidance. So um, a really a wide range of roles and, and different kinds of jobs uh, you're covering there, which makes a lot of sense because AI is obviously a team effort, right? Um, how about the AI adoption process itself? How does that this scenario break it all down? Yeah, AI adoption has six essential steps. So first, you develop an AI strategy. And as part of that strategy, you're going to identify your use cases. You're going to look at the goals you have for AI and then determine whether you're going to build or buy an AI solution for each use case. Then you develop an AI plan to move those use cases towards production. And if you decide you, know, you want to build in Azure for a particular use case, you're also going to need that additional step of getting AI ready. So think of this as preparing your cloud environment to host your AI workloads. And then everyone, regardless of what type of AI you adopt, you're going to need to establish processes to govern AI, manage AI, and secure AI. So these are iterative and ongoing processes. Awesome. I mean, this is sounds very familiar, like the rest of the cloud adoption framework, right? Like with these different steps where you develop a strategy, create a plan and so on. So that makes, makes a lot of sense. And I think this is a lot of value there. Um, we added there, especially when it comes to the AI part. So with these six steps, but it really continues as a journey, not just as a one-time event, 
like for most like the cloud journey doesn't really have an end right it is always continuing yeah. same is for this two for ai um let's make this a little bit more concrete can you give me an example of how these steps work in practice yeah absolutely so you know let's take the ai strategy step as an example when you develop your ai strategy as I noted earlier, you're going to start by identifying your specific use cases and then look at your goals for AI. And then you're going to turn to this AI decision tree that we have to help you find the right Microsoft AI service for each of your use cases. And when you, you know, land on an AI service, you're going to use the guidance we have to validate that this service is actually the right choice for you. And to do that, you've got to look at the skills needed to use it well. You need to understand the data requirements for that service and then carefully consider some of the cost factors to ensure you're successful with that product over time. This is actually a great example, I think. And um, But let's take this to the next stage. Let's talk about the AI ready stage. Yeah. How might organization prepare the foundation? I mean, similar for um, like in a cloud adoption scenario, with AI, we have the same thing. We need a strong foundation uh, to get started and make this sure that uh, this works for the future journey. So can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, the AI ready step, as I noted, is for teams building workloads in Azure as opposed to using you know, a SaaS solution, for example. So to build an Azure, you do need that AI foundation that you just mentioned. And this is gonna help you properly govern, manage and secure your AI workloads. And you know there are three fundamental best practices that I want to drive home here that are, that are applicable to everyone building AI workloads in Azure. So one, you want to isolate your internal AI workloads from your internet facing AI workloads. And you're going to do this using management groups and Azure policy. Two, you want to have a multi-region mindset when it comes to your AI endpoints and your data. You know, there are multiple ways to do this depending on what service you use, but you really need to have that multi-region mindset. And then three, highly consider using virtual networks as an additional layer of defense for your AI endpoints. And if you don't know where to start with all this, I really highly recommend checking out Azure Landing Zones. You're gonna get these three foundational best practices and really a lot more built in out of the box. Awesome. This sounds really like having the right foundation is critical. And I think it sounds like Azure is really providing the, those um, tools basically to build that foundation. Yeah, that's exactly right. And what the, what the foundation does is it allows you to start building your AI workloads on top of the foundation. And then the workloads inherit common governance, security and management controls that you set. So this helps to standardize AI adoption across your business and provides the control you need to manage those workloads over time. Fantastic. I love how structured and scalable this approach is. So Stephen, this has been incredibly insightful. Thank you for coming to the show and sharing your knowledge about the cloud adoption framework and all the resources for the AI adoption. Um, thank you very much. Absolutely, Thomas, this was great. You can find all the links and resources we covered today in this episode's description section below. Don't forget to leave your feedback in the comments. Give our show a like and subscribe to the channel so you get notified when a new episode drops. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Azure Essentials Show.